the reality of of the situation is just starting to sink in. Hey y'all, just got Kieran down for his uh, midday nap. About to get me a shower cause, ooh, girl. We are gonna be packing today for our trip up north. We do have to stop by like a Burlington coat factory or something to try to find a larger um, roller bag because uh, Cameron's broke and mine's definitely not big enough for all three of us. So we're just gonna go try to pick one up and then just check it. I really wanted to get everyone's opinion. So Kieran has had like this little rash that kind of just shows up right here. Only here, nowhere else. I've checked, it just, it's right here and it looks like eczema. My friends told me to try this and I've been using it for several days and it's kind of just getting worse. I was looking on Google and it, it looks like something called drool rash and it seems like I should be trying to keep that dry. And um, I was reading that it some, sometimes you can get like a, a fungal infection in the drool rash, so. I did decide to try putting some colloidal silver on it to see if that might help clear it up. Cause like I said, I feel like the eczema ointment's just kind of making it worse. I have been using colloidal silver for years in my cats, like with, with rescue cats, especially when they come to me with eye infections and everything. And if they had like Khaleesi virus, like if they had the um, ulcers in their mouth and everything, I just put colloidal silver on it, put it in their eyes, and that stuff would clear up so fast, like within 24 hours. Uh, a lot of people use like dressing for wounds that has colloidal silver in it too. So I'm just, I'm just, you know, taking a, a few drops and putting it on the rash, and I'm gonna see if it's gonna clear up. If anybody has any experience with drool rash, please let me know what you used and what helped, because I kind of feel like it doesn't seem to be bothering him, but I'd rather it not get to a point where it just gets really bad. It's starting to look a little red. Anyway, I am gonna shower now because I stink. Y'all want my tuna salad so bad. Hey, hey. I don't know if you think I'm just not smart or something, but I know what you're doing. I'm not gonna give you the tuna squawk. I'm sorry. The elevated cat dishes arrived. Cats really love them. I, I really like them too. Not only do they look cute, they just, they're so much better on the cat's posture while they're eating. And I don't know if this is just a coincidence, but ever since they've been eating out of those, I haven't seen anyone vomit after eating. Even Freckles, who just gobbles, gobbles, gobbles down everything so fast, and then she usually pukes afterwards. She, I haven't seen her vomit either. No more throwing up, huh? Oh, and of course, Squawk is completely back to normal. I really do think it was that kidney stone because it was it was like night and day. When I got up yesterday, he just seemed completely normal, <laughs> back to his, his normal self. A little update on the situation up north. We are working on getting um, hospice, palliative care all set up. And then my brother, my sister-in-law, and their two kids are just working on getting everything organized, like all of their stuff organized. I'm thinking of 
um, doing like a an Easter dinner while we're up there. My my family leaves on Sunday, so we can't do it on Sunday. But I'm thinking on Saturday I'll I'll cook an Easter dinner for everyone. You know, just some of our favorite comfort foods. Try to have like a nice little Easter celebration with family. The day that we're flying back home, I am going to be stopping in to see my hairdresser, whom I've been going to since I was a teenager. I, I can't believe it. I've been sitting in his chair since I was 17 years old. That's almost 20 years, but I figured I'd go get a nice haircut with him, you know, just kind of catch up with him, let him know everything that's going on because, you know, he loves my mom too. As far as me flying back up alone with Kieran, I'll probably, I, I need to check the airlines and everything, but um, I'm hoping to do that sometime in May, because I know we have his pediatrician appointment the 1st of May. So maybe after after that pediatrician appointment, I will fly back up for a couple of weeks. She'll have, you know, help with, with uh, palliative care, and then I'll be back to help around the house and, um, you know, do cooking and, and just be of moral support. My childhood best friend did offer, like if I fly into Spokane, that she, she would um, drive me over to my parents' house from Spokane. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna check the airlines and see what my best options are because it is gonna be kind of expensive. Oh man, I feel like the day just slipped away. It's um, almost 11 o'clock and I'm going to have to get up at 3 something. It's absolutely wild to me that this visit is what it's going to be, you know? I really just wish it was going to be a normal, regular visit that we usually do, but it's not. I've been sitting here kind of tossing around the idea of just staying because it might actually be cheaper to see if I can change my my flight back and Cameron of course would come back home and uh you know tend to the animals and everything but it might make more sense economically to just stay up there but I won't know if I'm gonna be needed right away until I get eyes on the situation because I am receiving all of my information secondhand and, I mean, you know how that can go. Sometimes, you know, text and everything can be received in a way that it wasn't meant to be sent. You know what I mean? So I just want to get my own eyes on the situation. And, and then I'm going to make a decision whether I'm just going to stay up there or if I'm going to come back down and then go back up. It's kind of just now sinking in. Like... The reality of of the situation is just starting to sink in, and um, I'm, yeah, I'm starting to feel kind of that dissociative, like out of my body feeling. But you know, I'm doing some grounding exercises, and I think talking it out helps a lot. It's supposed to be pretty cold when we get up there, like in the 50s and 60s, but I figured I was just gonna wear this sundress. Just thought maybe it would be nice for her to look at something bright and cheerful, you know? Because it's been pretty dreary up there, and I know that that affects her, so. I really want to go in and be just a, a positive, uplifting person for her. I know that the time spent in the nursing home and the hospital were not positive at all. And I think it was actually made things worse. So I just really, I want to go be a moral support or at least like an advocate, you know? Well, I am going to get some shut-eye. We have a big, long day of travel ahead of us, but thank you for watching.